makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Silver McGee and Molly with Donald Novice, Bill Thompson, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Life Begins When You're in Love. of your kitchen linoleum as bright and fresh as the day you first picked it out, or have they become dull and faded? Do you know the easy way to keep the colors of linoleum bright and cheerful? The answer, with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Glow coat turns a dull, lifeless floor into a beautiful floor in 20 minutes. It requires no rubbing or buffing. That's why it's called self-polishing. And that's just one of the reasons why glow coat has become America's number one floor polish. You can use Glow Coat on your varnished or painted wood floors, too. It gives a hard, gleaming polish that's easy to keep clean and spotless. If you spill something on a floor protected with Glow Coat, you simply mop it up with a damp cloth. Now, if you aren't using Glow Coat on your linoleum floors, order some tomorrow from your dealer. Remember the name, G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. Halloween party in progress tonight, given by the McGee's next-door neighbors, the Throckmorton P. Gildersleeves. And among the guests, we find many names from Wistful Vista's Blue Book, plus two names from Wistful Vista's Telephone Book, Fibber McGee and Molly. Uh, Well, it's quite a party, ain't it, Molly? Ah, oh, it certainly is, McGee. But stop blowing cigar smoke in my face, dearie. Oh, excuse me. I thought you'd like it. This is one of the best cigars. Oh, I've... there, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Mighty glad you could come over tonight. Well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's a lovely party. I'll have to hand it to you, Gildersleeve, for thinking up clever games to play. Uh, uh clever games? Yeah, like hiding the cigars. <laughs> How'd you ever think of hiding them in the bottom drawer of your dresser? <laughs> Why, McGee, you had no business snooping in Mr. Gildersleeve's dresser. Oh, that's quite all right, folks. Always glad to have the guests make themselves at home. That's what I figured. <laughs> if you'd like to check over my last bank statement, McGee, you'll find it in the desk in the library. <laughs> you must be mistaken, Gildersleeve. I didn't see it, and I went all through that desk when I was looking for the cigar. <laughs> Heavenly days, McGee, don't be so snoopy. I ain't snoopy, I'm just alert. Incidentally, Gildersleeve, there's a letter on your desk from your tailor. You mean to tell me you pay 85 bucks for them suits of yours? Why, uh... <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I do, McGee. <laughs> My goodness, McGee buys four of them for that price, don't you, McGee? Yes, Is that so? Oh, sure. You mean he buys his clothes? What? <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, folks, I'll see how the other guests are getting along. <laughs> Have a good time. What does he mean, do I buy my clothes? Where does he think I get them? Well, if you get them where I think he thinks you get them, I think you'll think twice about asking. <laughs> you mean you think I don't get them? Well, hello there, Molly. Hello, Fibber. Gee, we're having fun. What are you doing, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, playing games. Come on in the other room. Boomer's going to do some hand hand tricks. Oh, sweet. Come on, McGee. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for my first astounding bit of wizardry... I take the five-dollar bill. Hmm, don't seem to have a five-dollar bill. Will someone from the group pass me a five-dollar bill? Why, a five-dollar bill, Boomer? Can't you do it with a one? Certainly not. Five is a magical number. Five pennies in a nickel, five nickels in a quarter, and five quarters in a, in a dollar and a quarter. <coughs> ah, thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you, sucker. <coughs> now, uh, watch me closely. Presto, abracadabra, zingo. And the bill has disappeared. Entirely without the use of mirrors or concealed wires. Thank you. Hey, yeah, that's very good. <laughs> oh, now, quiet, please. Now, with another simple twist of the wrist, I might say a slight pang of regret, I will restore the $5 bill. Presto, abracadabra, zingo. And here... Well, well, must have made a slip somewhere. <laughs> Can't seem to bring it back. Oh, no, you don't, Boomer. Fork over that fin. 
Come, come, uncouth. <laughs> Surely you're not accusing Horatio K. Boomer of chicanery. Have your five dollars right here someplace. How where can I put that five dollar bill? Let me look through my pockets. That guy's so light fingered he has to stick his hands on an anvil to get a manicure. <laughs> And they better keep an eye on the anvil, too. <laughs> now, let me see. Five-dollar bill, five-dollar bill. Where can I put that five-dollar bill? Ah, here it is. No, 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 it isn't either. That's a photograph of my cousin Guernsey Boomer. <laughs> Good heavens, they're bow-legged, isn't he? <laughs> Not naturally, my dear, but he's been ridden out of town on a rail so often his knees have lost touch with each other. <laughs> now, let me see. Here's an advertisement for asbestos seat covers. Very handy for driving hot cars. <laughs> Package of corn remover. Here, give some to your script writer. <clears throat> Postcard from Minnie the Moocher. Ha <laughs> ha, the dear girl. Says she's now a facial masseuse in Texas. <laughs> the little panhandler. <laughs> Small bottle of mint sauce in case I want to take it on the lamb. <laughs> a check for a short hair. Well, well, imagine that. No $5 bill. <laughs> Wonder if it could have blown out the window. I'll blow out the door and see. tablet in the needle box, and it's been playing a man in his dream for 20 minutes. <laughs> well, hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. Quite a party, ain't it? Yes, it certainly is, <laughs> old-timer. Hey! He says, yes, it is. People go to parties for the same reason bald-headed guys go to burlesque shows. <laughs> they at least have the illusion of letting their hair down. <laughs> shopping early. <laughs> well, I gotta go in the other room, Johnny. They're bobbing for apples, and I gotta get my girl out of there. She's a pippin. <laughs> now, the old coop's on a hoot, ain't he, Molly? If he was there... Oh, there, folks. How's everything going? Oh, just... Mr. By the way, when do we eat, Rocky? Well, we're serving a buffet supper a little later. Hot dog, you hear that, Molly? A buffet supper. Oh, that's McGee's favorite kind of a meal, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. He goes around the buffet table like sea biscuit on a fast track. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, yes. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> but before we have dinner, folks, we're going to have a little more fun. 
Mrs. Uppington's going to tell somebody's fortune. Oh. Uh, oh, yes. They're drawing names in the other room now to see who the lucky man is. Hey, Andy. Uh, huh? Hey, it looks like you're it, McGee. Oh, this should be very amusing. Yes. yes. It's the first party we ever went to where McGee stuck out his hand instead of his neck. <laughs> oh, here he is, folks. Mr. McGee, I hope you don't mind having your fortune told. Oh, I just know, Uppy. As the chicken says when he busted out of the egg, I guess the future is worth taking a peek at. <laughs> Which hand do you want to read? Well, that depends, Mr. McGee. Are you right or left-handed? Well, I think he's left-handed. He reached for the lunch check with his right hand today and fumbled terribly. Well, then give me your left hand, Mr. McGee. Okay, here you are. Paul, meet Mrs. Uppington. Mrs. Uppington, my Paul. <laughs> How do you do? I'm very glad. Oh, oh, man, that was a joke. Welcome to everyone. <laughs> oh, now, now wait till I put on my glasses. I didn't have them on the last time I told a man's fortune, and I was horribly embarrassed, you know. Why, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, my dear. He had kitchen gloves on, and I told him I could see him lying on a plate with two fried eggs and a piece of toast. <laughs> Well, get busy, Uppy. Tell me, pretty gypsy. Oh, so very well. Now, first we come to the matter of intelligence. Oh, we do, eh? Get a load of this, folks. The intelligence is indicated by smooth mounds at the base of the fingers. What mounds? I ain't got any mounds. <laughs> oh. And now, this line, this is a lifeline. Well, throw it out. I'm going down for the third time. <laughs> ah, your lifeline tells me that... Oh, oh, good heavens. What, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, Mrs. McGee... I regret to inform you that your husband has been dead for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Abigail. Very good. <laughs> well, folks, we have time for a couple of more games before supper is served. Have you any suggestions? Oh, yes. 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 You know, I think it would be fun if we turned out the lights and told ghosts. Oh, hey, that's fine. That's a splendid idea. Everybody sit down, folks. I'll turn out the lights. <laughs> Ooh. Want me to tell the first ghost story, folks? Say, what do you know about telling ghost stories, dearie? Who, me? Why, Shucks, I've been an expert on ghost stories ever since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Used to give myself the creeps before I could walk. <laughs> I made quite a study of ghost stories. That was every time I'd walk into somebody's yard. Folks would shake their heads and look grave. Graveyard McGee, I was no dad. <laughs> Graveyard McGee, the gloomiest guy that ever gave goose flesh to a gay gathering with McGorry and Goose and Goblin Gavlin, getting guys' goats with great gobs of ghastly goings on, galvanizing groups of gaping greenhorns with gallows and graphic gibberish, and garnering the greatest bag of golden ghosts from the gusty gales of the Greenland Sea to the giddy owl oh, who's thinking me. <laughs> McGee, if you know so much about ghost stories, you go ahead and tell one. Okay, well, I'll let me think of hey, it. I know one. Shall I tell it? Go ahead. Okay. Well, it happened one night when I was driving through the swamps of Louisiana, when suddenly my engine went dead. And there I was stranded miles from nowhere, and a storm coming up. I had to find shelter somewhere, so I walked up the road to a deserted-looking, ramshackle old house. But before I could knock, the door swung slowly open. What's that? Excuse me, folks. My foot was asleep and I was straightening out my leg. Oh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> well, as soon as my eyes got used to the darkness, I saw a ghostly, shimmering figure. I heard a hollow voice say, Where's my head? Hey, <gasps> Mr. Wilcox, weren't you horribly perturbed? Was I? My nerves were waving back and forth like windshield wipers. But I took myself in hand and I said, I'm sorry, buddy, but I haven't got your head. Where'd you lose it? And the ghost said, right in this house. I came home one day. And when I saw the kitchen floor looking so dull and dingy, streaked and worn, I flew into rage. Oh, sure. I lost my head and bawled my wife out something terrible. Gee, I wish I hadn't done it. Because I know now what I should have done. But by that time, I had the door open again, and I ran like the dickens. Well, uh, what was the point of that story, Mr. Wilcox? Well, the point is that if you're haunted by the appearance of dull, faded, hard-to-clean linoleum floors, just try Johnson's Glow Coat. The no-rubbing, no-buffing floor polish that's so easy to use and keeps linoleum looking new indefinitely. And not only that... Okay, 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 okay. okay. You've pulled the plug, now get out of the tub. (laughs) 
Turn the lights on, somebody. Ah, uh, just a moment, folks. I think supper's ready, so if you want to step into the dining room. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh, 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 hey. Now, come on, McGee. What are you waiting for? You go ahead, Molly. I'll be in later. I got something I want to do. A <laughs> kind of Halloween gag. Don't say anything to anybody. Now, I'll be back in a little while. This concludes. Boy, it's dark out here. <laughs> I'd like to see Gildersleeve's face tomorrow when he looks in his garage. <laughs> oh, hey, get away from me. Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> yeah, that's just that's it, isn't oh, I? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh little girl, it's so dark out here, I didn't see you. What are you doing? Hmm? Now I says, what you doing? Playing Halloween. Oh. Gee, have I been having the fun, too. Skipping over garbage cans and soap and lamps and scaring people and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, have, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is right for it, sis. Incidentally, you know the difference between a ghost and a sailor with a sprained ankle? No. Well, one's a hobgoblin and the other's a gob hobblin. <laughs> <laughs> I says one is a hob... Oh, never mind. You run along and have your fun, sis. I got some private business to attend to. What you gonna do? Who's what you gonna do? Well, never you mind now. I bet you're going to ring somebody's doorbell, I bet you. <laughs> oh, no, I am. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, no, I am. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, no. Listen, sis. You run along and have your fun, and I'll go and have mine. Oh, why don't you let me go with you, hmm? Please, why won't you, hmm? That's better because I can't let you. That talks a lot, sis. Now, listen, you know whose garage this is? Yes, it's Mr. Gilder's place, I bet you. That's right, and I'm Mr. McGee. I live right next door here. Yes. I'm Halloween sick on Mr. Gilder's place. Take it easy. We don't want him to hear. Now, look, I'm going to sneak into Gilder's garage and let all the air out of his tire. Um... <laughs> will that be a panic or what? Will it? <laughs> Why, sure it will. <laughs> Boy, when old Gildersleeve comes out in the morning and... Watch this now. Don't make so much noise. Gee, <laughs> you're making all the noise, I bet you. Oh, well, come on now. If you want to be in on this, help me push this garage door open. Gee, <laughs> yeah, always have enough fun. <laughs> I wish it wasn't so dark in here, but I don't dare strike a light. Now, look, sis. You let the air out of the tires on that side, and I'll do the same on this side. You know how to let the air out? Sure. I had the air out of five cars already tonight, I bet you. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Man, Gee, it's just a dandy idea, mister. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good myself, sis. But don't you ever tell him. <laughs> hey, mister, the car's just out on this side. Okay, same here now, sis. Now, remember, this is a secret between you and me. Yes. I gotta get back to the party now. Okay. You know any more riddles, mister? Huh? Hmm? No, I don't know any more riddles. I do. Huh? What's the difference between a peanut butter sandwich and a policeman? Peanut butter sandwich and a policeman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, sis. I'm afraid I don't know the difference between a peanut butter sandwich and a policeman. Anna? Yep. Well, I guess that's your tough luck then, mister, because here comes the policeman now. Hey. Come on, mister. What? Hey, let me out of here. Folks, Donald know this thing with a song in my heart. With a song in my heart. Just a song at the start, but it soon is a hymn to your grace. When the music swells, I am touching your hand. It tells that you're standing near, and at the sound of your voice, heaven opens its portals to me. Can I have but rejoice that a song such as ours came to be? But I always knew I would live life through with a song in my heart for you.
go now. Well, please. well, I'm sorry you folks have to leave so early. But I'm mighty glad you could come over. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. My, my, it's just been a simply marvelous party. Ah, you like to throw old man. You sure know how to throw a party. Oh, it was <laughs> lovely. Say goodnight to Mrs. Gildersleeve for me. Yeah, me too, Gildersleeve. She's a wonderful cook, that wife of yours. Tell her how we had a terrific time tonight. I certainly will. I'm sorry she was so busy in the kitchen she couldn't meet any of you folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you must come over again sometime. Oh, uh, could I have my chauffeur drop you somewhere, Mrs. McGee? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Uppington. We just live next door. Well, good night. We've had a wonderful time, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night. Yeah, uh, good night, Gildersleeve. Good night, Mrs. McGee. Good night, Tibber. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 What a lousy party. <laughs> Heavenly day. Whoever told them they knew how to entertain. Yeah. Old Gildersleeve and his expensive cigars. Look at him. Dry as a bone. All ten of them. <laughs> well, I'm going right up to bed, dearie. I'm tired. Yeah, well, I'm coming up, too. Oh, my goodness, I hope I don't have bad dreams from that terrible food. Did you taste those hors d'oeuvres, Miggy? <laughs> oh, they didn't look tempting to me. My car, man. Imagine that. Imagine old Lady Uppington trying to tell fortunes. Mm. I think I'll get her a crystal eight ball for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, don't drop your shoes there on the floor, right where somebody will stumble over them. Oh, well, they're on my side of the bed. I'll be the one to stumble over them. <sighs> Hand me my cold cream, dear. Okay. Thanks. Did you notice the, the cheap towels in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> they were like limp sandpaper. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, you scare me with all that cold cream on your face, Molly. Why didn't you wear that mask to the party? <laughs> Imagine them old fogies playing post office at their age. <laughs> Ain't one of them with sufficient postage. <sighs> what time will I set the clock for? Oh, not too early, dearie. I'll want to sleep a while in the morning. Yeah, me too, after a night like that. That ghost story of Mr. Wilcox. Yeah. I'll bet the sponsor haunts him. <laughs> the way those people ate. You see the old timer? He was chasing the hammer on like an actor's agent. <laughs> hey, this, this underwear don't fit as good as it did a few years ago, Molly. It doesn't? It's getting a little snug around the ankles. <laughs> Where's my pajamas? Oh, here they are. Hang up your pants. Oh, I'll hang them up in the morning. <laughs> oh, baby, does this bed feel good to Papa? Oh, say, <laughs> remind me to tell you sometime about the trick I pulled on Gildersleeve tonight, Molly. <laughs> it was a peach. Oh, what a party that was. Oh, good night, Molly. Good night, dear. <sighs> Oh, I wonder who that is at this time of night. 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. <laughs> who? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, well, that was real thoughtful of you. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, we had a simply wonderful time. Yes, good night. McGee, that was Mr. Gildersleeve. What'd that stuffed shirt want? Well, he really did you a favor. Hmm? He said he forgot to tell you why you were over there. Forgot to tell you why? Well, his car was downtown being repaired, yeah. and he saw ours standing in the alley, and he was afraid the Halloween pressures would hurt it, so he put it in his own garage. <laughs> oh, that's nice of him. Maybe he ain't such a bad... What? What? <laughs> Molly will be 
will be back in just a moment. Look down at your floors for a moment. Is there anything in your entire home that gets such hard wear? No wonder they need wax protection. No floor finish like a varnish, shellac, or paint can stand up forever against the constant attack of scuffing and scraping shoes and sharp heels. These finishes themselves need the protection of a tough material that can be quickly and easily renewed. And that material is Johnson's Wax. Certain floor areas, such as halls and around doorways, get more wear than others. With Johnson's Wax, these traffic areas can be touched up and rewaxed without waxing the entire floor. In addition to providing this money-saving protection, Johnson's Wax gives you rich, mellow, beautiful floors that add charm to your entire home. With every application, this beauty increases while your housework decreases because waxed floors never need scrubbing, and they're easiest of all floors to keep clean. Ask your dealer for genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, in the familiar red and yellow package. feel that way about Gildersleeve's party. We just wanted to give you an idea of what we think happens after one of our parties. <laughs> Incidentally, Molly, there's one game we can play over there tonight. What was that, dearie? Pin the tail on the elephant. Uh, you mean on the donkey? Oh, no, Gildersleeve's a Republican. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and bring you all to be with us again next Tuesday night at this same time. Good night. Heard on the program tonight, where are you having any fun from George White's scandals and Ding Dong the Witch is Dead from The Wizard of Oz. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.